Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning and welcome to our service. We're looking this, this week at how we're going to encourage each other and bless each other during this time. And as we come up to Christmas and, and in light of the restrictions, uh, we're looking at ways in which we can just be an encouragement and blessing to one another. And so our prayer is that to, to the people that we meet, to the people around us, um, that in some way God would just speak through us um, and we'll be a, 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 a way of giving life and giving light uh, during this Christmas time. Sarah, would you like to just open in prayer for us yes. and then uh, we shall begin. Thank you. Yes, Lord, thank you that um, you are ever present, Lord, in times of trouble, Lord, ever present, always there. I want to thank you, Lord, for this new day. Father, you say that we're to, to come into your courts with thanksgiving and, and, and praise, Lord, and that can be, and you know, Lord, that can be so hard when things around us are not speaking of encouragement and, and good things, Lord. Um, but Father, I thank you, Lord, for this new day. And I thank you, Lord, that you are an ever-present God. I thank you that you've been there from the beginning of time. Lord, you're with us in these present circumstances and you will guide us through. And we lift your name on high this morning and we, we exalt your name this morning above all others. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your name is above all other names and that you reign. And Lord, as we come up to Christmas time, Father, uh, Lord, as Rob said, that you might help us to be salt and light with the, in our communities, within our neighbours, our friends, Lord. Father, that we might, not because it's a hard burden, Lord, because that's not what you do, but Lord, we just would allow you to speak through us, Father, to show your love and encouragement, Lord, to each other as a church, Lord, but also to those that we meet, Lord, where we shine out your love this Christmas. Will people be touched by you this Christmas? Will they see, Father, a real hope, a true hope for the future? I pray you bless each person listening to this now, Lord. I thank you that you're alongside them in their ups and their downs and all that's going on in their uncertainties, Father. And um, for me and Rob, Lord, you know our, the, the future, Father. We may not, but you do. And we give you praise and honour this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Welcome from us as well. We're starting the season of Advent and that was a good reminder of what this time is all about. Okay, so it was clearly a pre-COVID version as there's far less we're able to do, particularly here under tier three restrictions, but it is a time of preparation and getting ready. 
We know that this Christmas is going to be very different for many of us. And perhaps this week, with news emerging of what we are allowed to do over Christmas, there may be a mixture of feelings as we face up to the limitations that are being placed on us. Now the focus of the first Sunday in Advent is hope. And boy, do we need a big dollop of hope right now. Rob's message later is going to show how God's hope, the Lord Jesus, will emerge from a place of utter destruction and desolation. And that's clearly very relevant for us today, isn't it? Now, normally in church, one of our children would be lighting our first Advent candle. Well, we don't have that difficult task of picking somebody. You can all do it, even if you're an adult. You may want to get your own candle and light it, or you can help us light ours shortly. We'll have a minute where we're going to focus on a couple of verses that talk of the light coming into our world. If you're going to find your own candle and something to light it with, now's the time to get it. Well, we're ready, and so let's light our first candle of Advent together. Mm, exciting. There we are. I'm sure I not look too nervous. There we are. <laughs> now let's say this prayer together. I'll say the first line, and then we all join in on the second line in yellow. As we light our Advent candle, Love light of the world, shine on us. As we prepare for Christmas time, light of the world, shine on us. In this world of pain and darkness, light of the world, shine through us. To all the people who don't know you, light of the world, shine through us. Jesus, you are coming again, light of the world, Light the way in our service here today. Light of the world, light the way. So how do we prepare? Well, we prepare ourselves and our hearts for Jesus. He wants to live and reign in us through his Holy Spirit. Let's do that as we worship with these two songs from Matt before we hear from Rob. Take 
breaks my chain. There is one who bears my shame. There is one who leads me out of darkness. Just one name. Well, our message today is taken from one of the great Advent passages of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 9. To us, a child is born. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honour Galilee of the Gentiles by way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness... Have seen a great light. 
On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment rolled in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us pray. Well, Father God, we thank you for these words, these familiar words, but we pray that we might understand what true Christian hope is, relying on your words, trusting you for our futures, and understanding that even in the most darkest circumstances we can find ourselves in, there's always a flickering hope, a light dawning. Our hope is not in what we can achieve, it's in you, it's in what you can achieve. And so we pray, Father, teach us how to hope and place our futures into your hands and have victory in the present and live our lives in the present as ones who have hope for our futures. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When in 734, 734 BC, the Assyrian army moved into the north of Israel, the geographical area that's referred to here in Isaiah chapter 9, Ephraim and Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, these areas were particularly destroyed by the Assyrian invaders. Every house was destroyed and laid low. Many, many people were killed. Many people taken into slavery. And Jeremiah, in fact, also um, makes reference to these kind of invasions. He says, A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Despite their destruction, amazingly, God has for them a different season and time. They would receive great honour, because it's going to be here, in this place of great pain and great destruction. The Messiah is going to be born. The salvation is going to come. And God has an amazing ability to bring forth out of, out of darkness, out of, out of the suffering and difficulties that we face as human beings. This amazing ability to bring forth wonderful things, good things that can come out of that. In the midst of all of this, a child is born. In his humanity, a child is born. In his divinity, a son is given. The answer to all of our situations and circumstances of all of our pain and suffering. In the midst of this suffering, in the midst of this massacre, God has brought the greatest of hope. Jesus, the Messiah, and those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And there lies, I think, a really interesting point. That whatever your despair, whatever the circumstances we face, and however difficult those circumstances can be in the present, the Lord always leaves a flickering light, a flickering light of hope. A light is dawning. Now notice that the light is not an explosion of light. It's not a, uh, an eruption of light, if you like. It's a dawning light. It's a light that's coming. Hope is acknowledged, and it's, it's, it's acknowledged that it is coming. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be with us now, but it's something that's coming later. And, um, and the interesting thing about Messiah was they were expecting Messiah to come as a mature, mature man who was going to lead Israel into the sort of into the great age, so to speak. But he comes as a child, and not not to change the present necessarily, but to change the future. And because of that, Christians are a people of the future, a people of hope. We don't look back in despair and we don't look at our circumstances in despair, but we are looking, if you like, into the future with faith. So what is hope? 
We talk of hope today many, very often in vain terms. Oh, you know, we, we hope something might change, or we hope circumstances will alter, or we hope, for example, um, a situation will occur. But that's not Christian hope. Christian hope is not that uncertain. Christian hope is the certainty that is based upon the promises that God has given us, the word that he's given to us. And therefore we look forward with confidence and expectation in his promises and in his word. That however bad the present is, the confidence we have is in the future. The reason we don't despair in the present is because we have the word of God, the promise of God that is given to us for our futures. It lies in what God has said and who God is. Now we can see this illustrated throughout scripture, but one, one area that I, I think it particularly illustrates this well is where King David is confronting Goliath. And we need to ask ourselves the question, have we ever wondered why David is so courageous when he faces Goliath? Why isn't he so terrified? I mean, everyone's terrified of facing Goliath. And here's David, he's a, he's a young boy, he's, he's got no combat experience, got no combat training, he's just, he's not even able to wear the armour, he's just able just to sort of confront Goliath as he is, just in ordinary terms. And yet he's not afraid of Goliath. And why isn't he afraid of Goliath? I believe the reason he's not afraid is because he knows that Samuel has already anointed him as king. He's already prophesied him as the king of Israel. And therefore it is not possible for him to die at the hands of Goliath. Because God has said that he's going to be king of Israel. So he's not intimidated by the present because he's living in the truth of the prophecy and the promise that God has already given to him. Our lives can be transformed, however difficult the circumstances are that we face in the present. They can be transformed by the promise, by holding on to the promise, holding on to the prophecies that God has made for our lives and all that he intends to do in us and through us. David believed more in what God would do than what Goliath could do. And when we stand in the promises of God, and we stand in the prophecies of God, however difficult our circumstances are currently, we stand knowing that God's will and God's purpose for our life is the most important thing. It's the thing that's going to transform everything around us. Now, when we live in, in hope, we start to see hope growing inside us. And we need to learn that that hope does grow. It, it's not something that just comes in its final state. It's something that matures and develops as we start to live out, if you like, the, the promises that God has given us, the expectations that we have of the Lord. And we can see that really well is illustrated in other parts of the scriptures. There's a, there's a, a moment in, in the life of Jesus, recording in, in Luke's gospel, where ten lepers confront Jesus and they asked Jesus if he would heal them and cleanse them. Now, lepers at the time um, were not part of Jewish society. They were excluded from Jewish society, um, not just um, for, um, obviously, for health reasons, but also for religious reasons, and they were excluded from religious participation as well. And it was believed that the only person that could heal lepers, that could restore lepers, was Messiah. And so Jesus demonstrates his Messiah. He demonstrates who he is through the healing of leprosy. And he says to these men, go and present yourselves to the, um, to the priest. In other words, so that you'll, he will see that you're cleansed and therefore you will be, uh, again, able to participate in Jewish worship. And so as they start walking off, they are healed. And interestingly enough, they're not healed immediately. They're healed as they start walking. And I think there's a really important point there. In other words, they start to, they, they walk in the answer before they experience the answer. In other words, they're, they're kind of walking out the answer, living out the answer before they've even experienced the answer. And that, that expectation, that hope, if you like, can transform the present. We almost bring the future into the present by living out the answer, even before we've seen it. 
God says through his prophet Hosea, I will make the valley of Achor a door of hope. In other words, in every place where, where there's been difficulty, in every crisis, God is going to open up a door for him to do something that's good and something that will change. And that something of the Lord, something of God's touch will be found in that place. Who would have thought that the very place that was destroyed by the Assyrian army, the Valley of Achor, that would become, if you like, the very place where God's purposes for salvation of this world will be birthed. What is our hope in? You know, we're very tempted to think that our hope can be in all kinds of solutions. We might have our hope in in, in technology or our, in policies or in philosophies or theologies even. But God makes it very clear in this passage that our hope is found in a person. The answer, if you like, to our problems is not a technology, it's not a policy, it's always a person. And the greatest need that we have, the greatest problem that we have, our spiritual welfare and our spiritual destiny, that's met by the greatest person. For it says very clearly, unto us a child is born. Not, a theo- not unto us a theology is born. Not unto us a policy is born. Not unto us a technology is born. But unto us a child is born. You know, it's tempting to, for us to think about systems and programs that will enable us to live a better life. But actually, ultimately, the answer lies in the person. That's our greatest comfort. That's the thing that, that brings us the peace that we so that we so crave. But we rely not upon ourselves, we rely upon him. He is greater than all of this. And we go forward with our hand in his hand, trusting and believing him for our futures. And this was illustrated in a piece that I read uh, a little while ago. Um, it's a piece about King George VI. And you might not know much about King George VI. He was born in 1762, died in 1850. But you might know of him because he was the one that built the Royal Pavilion at Brighton, Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, and the National Gallery. So we know him because of some of these great landmarks. But in 1850, on the year that he was dying, he gave a speech, a New Year's Eve speech. His own body by that stage was racked with cancer. But before he died, he said this. He said, I said to the man at the gate, give me a light that I might walk safely into the unknown. And he said to me, go out into the darkness, put your hand into the hand of God. It shall be to you safer than the light and better than the known. It will be to you safer than the light and better than the known. And and our prayer is that we will learn how to trust in him, how we can rely upon the words that he's given us, the promises that he's given us, put our hands in his hands. And even in the most darkest of circumstances and situations, we can trust him. We can trust him because it's better than the known. I'm going to leave you with these words again. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his kingdom and peace there will be no end. Of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these these words of comfort and of, of grace and of peace to us. We pray that we will learn, Lord, how to be a people who walk in the answers before we even receive them. A people who trust in the promises that you have and are, and are governed by the promises that you have given us in your word rather than the circumstances we face. Help us, Lord, therefore, to be a people of hope, a future people who put our hands in your hand and trust you for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's use what Rob has shared as an opportunity to respond to God, to the one who brings hope through his promises and their fulfilment. Jesus did not wait for an invitation to come as a baby. God loved the world so much that he sent his only son. But then it was up to his people and up to us today as to whether we are going to receive him. Now, the way we receive him is by asking him to come into our lives. And our response can be just one simple word, come. So we're going to conclude by enjoying that lovely Advent carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And then we're going to invite Emmanuel, God with us, to be with us where we are, in our lives and where we are in this world. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and the ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God
Well, again, this is a simple response prayer. And after each phrase, we'll say together, Lord, come down, or Lord, rend the heavens and come down. And the response will be on the screen. Into our emptiness, into our brokenness, Lord, come down. Into our loneliness, into our neediness, Lord, come down. Into our busyness, and our distractedness, Lord, come down. Into our chaos and our unsettledness, Lord, come down. Into our shallowness and our small-mindedness, Lord, come down. Into our past and into our present, Lord, come down. Into our future with all its uncertainty, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. For those on the margins and all forgotten, Lord, Lord come, come down. For those in the dark, in chains of despair, Lord, Lord come, come down. down. Into our world with all its unsettledness, Lord, Lord come, come down. down. In places of war and violence and conflict, Lord, Lord come, come down. down. In all of our darkness, send us your light. Break forth the daylight, banish the night. Lord, Lord rend the heavens and, and come, come down. down. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we pray that the service was a real blessing to you today. I'd like to finish um, our service time together uh, just by reading a piece of scripture that we're really familiar with, Isaiah chapter 9. It's just part of that passage this time. And um, it just reminds us about the true meaning of Christmas, that Christmas is really all about Jesus Christ. It's all about celebration and the worship of Jesus and the recognition that as we come into this Christmas time, that the true light for us at this time, the true light in the darkness is Jesus. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. God bless you and God keep you at this Christmas time.